Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Monday, and we have a little bit of free time on our hands. I thought it'd be fun for us to do a weblog for the video game section of the Noel Comics YouTube channel. Late last night, uh, YouTube was all abuzz. At least the uh, weird corners of YouTube that uh, I check out, namely uh, angry uh, nerds talking about video games and professional wrestling. Uh, the video game segment of that community was talking a lot about the cancellation of the reboot of G4, and I have done a couple videos on the G4 topic for the channel, so I figured, well, I got a little bit of free time on my hands, why not have some fun content for the YouTube channel and get some venting done, and we'll see where this video leads. Now, the first video on G4 I did was discussing the uh, now infamous uh, Frost Grant, where a tatted up young Ellen DeGeneres decided to bemoan uh, male privilege uh, on, on G4. Uh, and then the second video I did was talking about some formatting changes, bringing in Amaranth for a couple of guest spots, uh, and trying to uh, get on Pluto TV to make things more accessible, which was great. Uh, and, you know, trying to kind of shift into more of the old uh, G4 from the, from the you know, the, the aughts, you know. Um, and I thought that some of those changes were promising. And then I did some discussion of commentary YouTube versus G4 and their intentions, maybe not always being altruistic, sometimes feeding into the negativity to benefit their own view count, which is uh, not a good thing. Uh, well, you know, whatever your views are of G4's new version, it's uh, it's gone now, technically, but it's still on Pluto TV. But what's interesting is when you hit the uh, the guide button here, it just says sign off, which is kind of kind of eerie, kind of interesting. It's like uh, we're in kind of ghost town here where it's uh, the channel's still rocking and rolling, but uh, there's nothing forecasted uh, for the future. So what happened? What's my opinion uh, of what happened? Well, you know, a lot of YouTubers will say it was the Frost Grant that did it, uh, that, you know, G4 had all the tools to be great and they just couldn't get out of their own way. Uh, with their woke politics, and uh, they deserve to die because of that. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that the uh, woke politics was really, 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 really off-putting, and people who I think tend to embrace woke politics exist in a bubble, and they are falling into that ivory tower mentality um, where you think that you're smarter than everyone, um, and you think you know what's best for everyone, but you don't even know who everyone is. So you're very off-putting, right? And I think that's definitely something that happened with the G4 situation. I mean, and plus you could argue that a shrill feminist political rant was out of place on a video game channel that has a primarily male viewer base that is not interested in being uh, educated you know, by uh, an enlightened feminist vanguard. Uh, so that's uh, that's not what they're what they're there for. And it's, so, but whatever. I mean, I have a lot of politics on my channel too. It's just you got to know how to communicate properly. Um, but so that definitely didn't help things. Uh, but I really think what did G four in uh, this time around, and I can talk about what did him in the first time around. And I've talked about that in previous videos. What did him in this time around was a failure to replicate the experience of the past. Right? History is about continuity and change right? And continuity is great, change is inevitable, and it's being able to walk that razor's edge between the two in a way that allows you to continue to be yourself, but to adapt to changing variables, okay? And G4, the second time around, did not do that. And I don't even know if G4, the second time around, the people in charge of it even understood what worked about it the first time around. And what worked about it the first time around was different based on different viewers. In my experience, for me, what worked the best the first time around was uh, nerdy male camaraderie, uh, accessible, relatable guys, uh, pretty girls, video game content, uh, you know, uh, electronic culture, uh, some uh, funny cartoons aimed at guys in their early 20s, teens, and just basically having some fun with that whole world. Then there was also the Tech TV uh, G4 people who, 
you know, had their uh, experience watching tech TV and some of that carried over to G4. And as G4 started to kind of drift toward the more Spike TV formula, they started to get alienated. I do think the original G4 drifting into the Spike TV situation was the end of that original channel. We can, you can kind of agree or disagree on your taste. You know, how much cheesecake do you want on your tech TV channel, you know, kind of thing. But Ultimately, the original G4 lost its way because they wanted a different demographic and the channel became Esquire and they started knocking JRPGs and it was really stupid. And you could really tell that whoever was in charge of the company thought that uh, nerds watching their channel was not profitable, that that was not a good consumer base they, that they wanted. What they wanted the demographic was they wanted it to be a new Spike TV. And that's what became of the original G4. And... You know, nobody is opining for Esquire to return, but a lot of people had fond memories of the original G4, as do I. And I've talked in previous videos about how I sat at my best friend's house. We all had our different video games going, three video games going in the same room in a 27-inch tube set playing uh, G4 on a loop. Uh, and we had a lot of fun, and it was a lot of comfort and a lot of happiness, right? So with, you know, society... Uh, and the United States hitting a state of malaise and, and decline, you know, the, the return of, of a happier time in the early 2000s with the return of G4 offered a lot of promise and excitement. And the uh, new G4 failed to deliver, I think, what worked with the new G4. And you could either argue it was um, proper expertise and quality journalism about technology and video game news. You could argue that this new G4 lacked the um, relatable girl next door, the pretty girl, uh, to kind of add some eye candy to the uh, discussion about video games. Um, and what you ended up getting was a lot of uh, Silicon Valley hipsters with very uh, angry political views because they lived in that bubble of, you know, Democratic Party politics and Twitter culture. And that was not what anyone wanted in their video game channel, <laughs> you know. Um, then it seemed like G4 tried to kind of correct itself. Uh, but, but the problem was when it tried to correct itself, it was too sporadic with how it corrected itself, you know. You'd get Amaranth, you'd get Pokimane, they'd kind of pop in, you'd get the pretty girl here and there, you'd get a little bit of charisma and humor, but it was not there consistently, right? Like, you'd tune in, and you'd see, like, Olivia Munn on Attack of the Show, like, every evening, or Morgan Webb every evening, you know, on X-Play. Um, so, there was no consistency to the hints of, a, of the past uh, Geist that G4 once had. It was kind of sporadic. And then they tried to get on the streaming culture of things. Uh, and I thought the games that they streamed were kind of bland. You know, it was, it, the new G4 was very corporate. You know, it was kind of like, hey, the kids like the Battle Royale games, so we're just going to show a bunch of Battle Royale streams. And it's like, that's not... <laughs> like, the way that streaming works, in my opinion, as someone who likes to stream is, what makes the stream is the personality of the streamer, what they bring to the gaming experience. Are they entertaining to watch? And I would say also the choice of game and the variety of games. Like you gotta, if you're gonna like put your money into like showing people stream games, then you need to show a variety of, of games being streamed. Yeah, have people play Battle Royale games, but then you should also have a show where people are streaming Street Fighter, where people are streaming retro 2D games, where people are streaming platformers on the Switch. That's what you need to do. And... I would also argue that if you want to get some quality streaming done, what you should have done is you should, obviously it's Monday morning quarterbacking and everyone's got a solution after the fact, but you could have gone to people like Pokimane and, um, you know, Corpse Husband and things like that, or, you know, just other people who are knowledgeable. Go to, go to Justin Wong or something like that if you want more mainstream, flashy uh, you know, competitive gamers or, or streaming personalities and offer them jobs or even just offer them money to show clips of them playing games for like a half an hour and work that into your schedule, you know, have them become uh, contracted talent or enter into agreements with them where you can use their content on your channel. Because what you ended up getting was a lot of people who did not always have the best uh 
charisma, you know, playing games that were kind of bland. And that didn't help, even when you were trying to shift away from the uh, feminist grandstanding and, and whatnot. Now, that said, there were still some very good reviews that I did see on, on this version of G4. And some of them came from Frosk. So, you know, there was definitely some good stuff. And I think if you were able to just at least keep the G4 name around and show reruns, like this is like G4 Select, right? It shows reruns. It's supposed to show like a selection of the good stuff. I would lean heavily on the stuff from the, the aughts, like, you know, 2004 four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, that kind of thing. Um, even up to 12, you know, just show like the original G4, Attack of the Show, X-Play, Code Monkeys type stuff. Keep showing Ninja Warrior, like things like this. They got the old Ninja Warrior on, on Pluto TV. Um, and then, dude, just get, get some of these people in a room playing some games and chatting, you know? <laughs> like it doesn't have to be a big production. I run my YouTube channel on nothing, okay? <laughs> like, absolutely nothing. It's my cell phone, it's a, it's a camera stand, and it's it's some flow of thought and hopefully some, some interesting information. So that's all you really need. If you can have the G4 logo and that, and some honesty and some authenticity, and not like authenticity in a corporate sense, I'm just like, have people that can explain what they like and why they like it, not authenticity like, oh, we keep it real. You know, we're not like Vanilla Ice. We're really from the streets. It's like, no, if you're if you're trying to say you're authentic, you're automatically inauthentic because your authenticity has already become a, um, a, a role that you're playing, basically. And you don't want that. You just want to be yourself and you want to know what you believe and why you believe it and do a effective way of explaining those things. So, in conclusion, uh, this version of G4 didn't do that very well. And the other thing that didn't help either was uh, commentary YouTube uh, basically antagonizing it nonstop but not offering constructive criticism. And now that the channel's over, you have some, like, kind of faux crocodile tears from people. Like, oh, well, my heart really goes out to the people that lost their jobs. It's like, no, it, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, maybe it does, but I don't think it... I don't think of being very honest about it because you were out for blood and didn't care about the consequences you know, before. Uh, or at least that's not where your, your energy was. Your energy was ruthlessly attacking the channel and building yourself up while knocking something else down. And that's poor content, in my opinion. So, well, these were just my uh, brief thoughts on this. Uh, hopefully, uh, they, you know, like, honestly, a lot, of, a lot of good YouTube channels are just YouTube channels that rip people's VHS tapes and show that stuff. So they, look, G4, they, they got their old catalog. Just run that old catalog, uh, keep it on Pluto TV. And then I would argue if you wanted to somehow resurrect this again, just do it really chill. And, you know, uh, I would either uh, contra contract some well-known streamers uh, and then just try to, and just to, just to stream a variety of games if you wanted to go that route, do some honest video game reviews and uh, just... Do, do, do the thing that guys like me are doing. Just get the camera rolling and say what you like and why you like it and do hopefully a, a succinct and charismatic uh, uh, product. So there's that. Until next time, guys, my name is Noel. You take care, and I will see you in the very near future for more video game reviews, live streams, and weblogging action on the Noel Comics YouTube channel. Bye-bye.